والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم Glory be to Allah who sent Ramadan as a mercy to mankind It's a purification of our soul our heart and our mind Bear with patience for the sake of our Rahman A continuous training to strengthen our iman With the most sincere devotion and love we find Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Hello and welcome to the sixth episode out of ten of your program Ramadan Changed Me The program where we all together try to be the best that we can be and achieve positive change and self-development during the great holy month. It is the program where you can also win grand prizes by subscribing at uh, our website uh, e.holul e.holol.net to do for yourself the uh, self-development test, the pre-test, the uh, continuous test throughout the program and of course the final grand test at the end of the holy month where 40 uh, of you will win uh, prizes totaling up to 80,000 Saudi riyals. The first prize is 20,000, the second 15 and the third is 10. Uh, you could also win with us by answering our daily Islamic uh, trivia question, a daily laptop, by SMSing us at 002 014 And very shortly we'll be telling you about the winner of the fifth uh, laptop uh, on Ramadan Change. We can also uh, uh, call us live on 002 248 or 249 or email us at ramadanchangeme at hoda.tv if you want to share with us and contribute uh, uh, to uh, your program. Um, before we uh, go on to business, we'll tell you about uh, yesterday's question and the winner. Uh, yesterday's question was, what was the surah uh, in the Holy Quran that had a, a prostration of recitation at the end, uh, sajda tilawa, and the three choices were uh, one, Al-A'raf, Surat Al-A'raf, two, Surat Nuh, and three, Surat Al-Qalam. And the correct answer was Surat Al-A'raf, the number one choice. And the winner for, uh, the, um, for yesterday's uh, question is Sister uh, Maryam Melo. Uh, who uh, sent us an SMS uh, from al Madina Al-Munawwara in Saudi Arabia. Sister Maryam Melo, congratulations. You're the uh, fifth winner uh, of our daily laptops. Uh, and as we always say, sisters are more lucky than brothers so far in this program. It's four to one. Um, anyway, at the end of uh, tonight's episode, we will be telling you about the question where you can also win uh, another uh, laptop, but don't forget the grand prizes are by doing uh, the self-evaluation, self-development practices and tests at e.hulul.net. Tonight's topic uh, needs 300 minutes and not 30 minutes, so I will give the ball right away to our life coach, self-development expert, uh, Sheikh Ramiz Ibrahim, because the topic is rage control or anger control, and I guess... It is probably the most interesting for, probably, I would say probably, for all of you and all of us here. Sheikh uh, Ramiz Ibrahim, uh, welcome to the show. It's always a pleasure and uh, waiting for your guidance on this very sensitive uh, topic. Also with us uh, in the studio, as always, our dear brothers, uh, uh, Brother Abdullah Adiyami, Amr Abdul Al, uh, Asher Saeed, and uh, Sharif Hamdi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear brothers. And uh, coach, the ball is yours. Rage control. Where would you like to start? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. This is a topic that really cannot be given uh, any justice by me. But it's something that it, it holds to my heart because I have suffered from rage in the past. Who hasn't? Well, yeah. Jazakum uh, khairan. And um, because I've suffered it, I need to do something about it. When I say suffered it, I don't suffer. I don't suffer. The people who are rage, 
don't suffer. It's the people who are in front of them that suffer. So we can't say we suffer from rage. <laughs> rage. Because some people enjoy rage. They yeah. Act, it, it's, so. it's, it's, it's like a drug. You know, it makes you feel powerful, but it's really you're weak. You're in a very weak state. And I found myself asking the question, I need to do something about it. What do I need to do? Because I can't continue like this. It's, it's just impossible. You know, breaking things and this. I don't mind saying it because it's, uh, I'm, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's lessened, I would say. And it's part of me that I need. And the more I teach it, the more I learn about it, inshallah. The, and I would just say again, the who way, hasn't? Yeah, jazakallah khair. And the first, my foremost turning point was when I went to Umrah. I had to go to Umrah and get away from everybody. And you can't run away from yourself. But um, I asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to actually remove the, this anger. I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it alone. It's impossible. It was just too much. It was over, overbearing me and overpowering me. And I said, Allah, please, only you can help me. I can't do this alone. Alhamdulillah, it, it started dying off uh, slowly, gradually, gradually uh, uh, but surely. Until a point where now is I have an anger problem rather than a, a rage problem. And most of these problems, they actually stem from, um, and I'm sure you viewers, that you, you actually do have the same problem. And uh, you need to really address this and be authentic with it. And you need to look in the mirror and say to yourself, do I have an anger problem? And if you say to yourself, no, you'd be lying or you're trying to hide something. Everyone suffers from it some, in some point of their life or in some situation. It's very difficult to um, uh, employ the techniques on yourself because the nafs it doesn't want to uh, be reduced. It wants to be in the limelight all the time. And I'm sure you viewers, you, that you, you, you actually do suffer from it, and especially the fathers. The fathers uh, have got so much, they're outside fighting the lions, and they come home, they have to fight the tigress as well. And the wives have to be helpful in this manner. Although you can't blame the, the people, you, you have a choice whether to react or respond. Which brings me on to um, a story, I'm sure many of you have heard this story, uh, about a young boy who suffered from anger and his father said to him, every time, for the next few weeks, every time you feel anger, I want you to, to hammer a nail into this fence. By the time he got to 37 nails, it got to the point where he, it was easier for him to control his anger than it was to bang another nail in the fence. Hmm. So his father came and said, good, now take the nails out one by one. Every time you get angry now, pull the nail out. So after 37 nails, his father came and said, look at what's left over. Mm. Look, what, look at the, what's left damage. over. Look, look, at the result, look at the damage, look at the result, resulted damage of what's being done. No. Yeah, you can plug it up. Mm. And it was try, easier you can to nail his, it than to pick it up. Yes, it wasn't easier to nail it than pick it up. But in the end, he was... Uh, adamant that he realized that it was easier for him to actually uh, remove, um, to control his anger than it was to uh, bang another nail in. Um, whilst I'm speaking, I want you guys to start thinking of a situation where you were in, that you were angry, you reacted, not responded, and that you regret. Very important to th start thinking about this. Um, but, and the fence will never be the same again, obviously. And that's the, that's, that's the thing, we, we, we regret certain things that we do, but sometimes it's easier to try not to do the, first thing, the thing in the first place than to try and rectify it after, especially with anger. The, we know that the it's anger is from shaitan, as he is made from smokeless fire. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Adam, what prevented you from bowing down for why I created my own two hands? What did he say? That you created me from fire and him from clay. Obviously, I'm better than him. So he was angry and he was, he was racist against the human race. And this is where racism comes. If you find yourself you know, being racist or nationalist or, you know, in, 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 and, and it compromises your deen because of it, know that this is a disease in the heart. And viewers, you have to understand this as well. I know most of the viewers are from all over the country and you're going to hear me and I want you, it's, not, there's, it's an instinct to actually love your country. Not a problem. There's not a problem to love your country. Okay? But anything that in the dunya that you love over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
or over Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi or over the deen, it becomes a problem then in your character, and you have to try and rectify that. And that includes anger. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he never got angry for anything personal. He got angry just for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said that the, uh, the strong man isn't the one who actually uh, has power. It's the one that can control his anger when he's in a situation of, of, of rage or, or, or anger. That means when you are actually in, a, in that state of anger, you are actually weak. You are a weak human being. And, it, it, and we have to understand that if you're humble, if you are humble, then the more power you have, the more physical, mental, spiritual power you have, the more mercy you should have on human beings. If you know you can crush that ant, and you crush it, what does that mean? You should have more, more humbleness, more mercy, then Allah will have mercy on you. Indeed, anger yes, anger yes. is of three forms. Okay, you have the extreme, you have the moderate, and the insufficient. The extreme form of anger, nobody should have. Okay? It's too much. How can you get angry for something as simple as that? Simple things. People get angry over simple things. Because their ego don't, doesn't like it. The ego doesn't like it. And it wants to vent. The same way, not everybody, okay, not everybody can give good advice. Sometimes when you go to get advice from a brother or a sister, then uh, 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 um, what happens is, he or she will give you the understanding about what, what the, they think you should do. Oh, get rid of your wife, get rid of your husband, because but he's really venting or she's really venting what is inside, inside them. That was before, mm. the anger. Okay? Mm. And it can become extreme. So yeah, you should get rid of her. But that's not why, when someone comes to, you to ask for advice, you should be a good listener. Okay? Mm. You should listen very, very well, and don't put your input in it. Don't get uh, biased. And say, well, here's my opportunity now to vent my anger, or vent what I should have vented a long time ago. So by you trying to make the other person divorce or cause problems, you think that you're venting out and it's, it's releasing. But it's just nafs. There's no training involved in, in this person to give advice. And to give advice, not everyone give advice. Especially if you're, if, if you're a person that has no balance. Okay? Now, an Sheikha extreme, Ramiz, an extreme uh, form. Sheikh uh, Rami's uh, dear uh, viewers will... Sorry, we have to take a short break here. Uh, and we'll be back uh, uh, in this uh, very uh, interesting topic uh, after that break. Stay tuned with us. With patience for the sake of our I continue our training to strengthen our Iman. One of the highest grades of patience is fasting. Allah said in the divine hadith, إِلَّا الصَّوْمْ فَإِنَّهُ لِي وَأَنَا أَجْزِي بِهِ Only fasting is sincerely dedicated for me, and I'm the one who will reward for that. Ask it as a program which aims to answer your questions about your deen, your faith, your way of life. This course is Islam. This is a totally different price, but I divided the payment over this period of time. And the seller is the person or the firm which owns uh, the item which you're buying in this condition. This form of business transaction is love. <laughs> Of 
Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh once more dear viewers and we, we, we were talking in the studio uh, at the break about something we want to share with you and uh, that is why is it sometimes what gets, what gets us angry is very small things sometimes that there are very silly things but uh, if you're, you're uh, overwhelmed with a, with a very important uh, situation you find yourself calm and, and, and poised we don't understand that, but we were trying to discuss that in the, in the studio. And we want to take uh, all of us this to you, uh, Sheikh Ramiz Ibrahim. I mean, that's a, that's a dilemma. Asalaamu Alaikum. Yeah, we we'll, were we'll talking about the three uh, dimensions of anger, uh, extremity, and extreme being extreme, moderate, and insufficiency or negligence. And extremity is of two forms. The first being uh, extreme at the, f at the time of being angry or, 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 or being in rage, and its constancy and its constancy. The other uh, form is when the person is negligent. They haven't got enough anger, anger to even be jealous to show to, to, as a protectorate. And obviously moderacy is what we need. A moderate, and this is what we were trying to, we're trying to get the, ba the balance. It's like on one hand we can have the aqidah of the khawarij, and on the other hand we can have the aqidah of the murji'a, the liberalists and the extreme uh, uh, people on against major sins. And sometimes we need the ummah, we need to have the balance. Okay? The same way. Sometimes we're extreme in anger, sometimes we haven't got enough anger. And we need the moderacy, we need the balance of mm. that anger. Mm. How to get that? How to get that? It's a long journey. The anger comes from frustration, which is the twin half or the sister of anger. And uh, when uh, you, you feel like you've made a plan, it doesn't go according to what you want, the way your way is. You get frustrated inside, and then it comes out in a form of anger or rage. In a situation where it has nothing to do, like, you, uh, like a simple situation. So the, the, the anger, there is no relation in, in the sense that it, 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 doesn't, um, how can I, it doesn't relate to the simple situation. The extremity of the anger is something may have fallen, and that's it. You just need a little excuse to vent it all out, because you can't hold it in. If you look at the Chinese people, or the Japanese, they know how to control their emotions. May you Allah know? grant us all patience I, in the uh, month patience, of patience. Yes, of course. Uh, we have with us uh, Sheikh Ramiz, uh, uh, a phone call from uh, Nigeria. It's Sister Sarah. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Sister Sarah, are you with us? Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for calling. Wa alaikum assalam. You're welcome. Go ahead, Sister Sarah. Um, good evening, Sheikh Ramid. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullah. Yes, Sister, I can hear you. Okay. My question, okay, what, what, um, my experience with anger is, I don't think I have ever been in a situation where I'm angry with human beings. I think my situation is um, sort of, anger with God, if you understand what I mean. I mean, sometimes, you know, most of the time I pray, I want this, I want that, I want to have this in my mind, maybe you understand, I said maybe time, and then I don't get it, and then I say, okay, like, most of the time I pray, رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِقُلُوبَنَا بَعْدِ إِسَهَرَيْتَنَا وَحَبْنَنَا مِنْ لَنْ دُوْكَ رَحْمَةَ إِنَّكْ أَنْتَ لُوْهَا And then I find myself singing, you know, uh, you know, things like that, and then I ask, what happened to the prayer? And it frustrates me and it gets me angry and then I don't want to pray again. So, you know, what do I do about that? Alhamdulillah. Thank, thank you, Sister Sarah. Thank you. Appreciate your uh, contribution. Sheikh Ramis. This was asking that she makes the du'a and it doesn't affect her? Uh, no, I, as I understood that usually she gets angry with herself, not, not with, with right. other people. And sometimes okay. she tries to, uh, to calm herself by uh, reciting uh, Quran and, and so on. And sometimes it succeeds, some, sometimes it doesn't. I think she was trying to say that some du'as, she doesn't see them take an effect right. in her life maybe. Again, right. maybe again. And she's in, expecting in, in it Black to and white, it's, right. it's intention. There's nothing wrong with the, or the prescription that Allah SWT gives us, Support or the you. prescription of Rasulullah SWT gives us. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. The problem is with us. If it doesn't work, we have to look back into ourselves. What's mm. our intention? Okay? But we have to go back now into a little bit of a, uh, a deeper context. That means how you we were brought up. Did you see anger on a daily basis? 
did you see? And viewers, when I speak, I wish you know you were here so that we can have a, have a dialogue with it as well. I want you to keep in contact uh, 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 with, with the episodes in regards to these kind of uh, uh, talks. Is that the way we were brought up? The way we, we see how, how, how our parents reacted to certain situations would have an effect on us, a diverse or a good effect on us as well as we grew up. How we deal with anger. Okay? Uh, for example, some brothers, some brothers are soft and they're tuada and they're very latif and they're very calm. And you ask them a question, is your mother very calm? And they will say to you, yes. And those brothers got an anger problem, seriously. I said, is your mother a very domineering woman? Is she very powerful? They'll say yes. In my experience. But, uh, and all this has to take in consideration. This is why anger management classes, training, and uh, finding out uh, yourself by going to a, train, uh, a trained person who can pick out some things from you, who you don't mind will look at you and say, I've just noticed something that every time you get angry, you get a bit emotional. Can you hold on to that thought? What is it? What, what's, what's, what's behind it? What are you thinking now? And most often, when you do get angry, you think of a situation that happened way, 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 way back in the past. Not this situation. So you're reacting to this situation for what happened before. I call it residual, residual emotion. A husband and wife had an argument. Have an argument. And they don't, they don't conclude it at all. They don't conclude it. And they hold it in. Next time, they're arguing about the broken cup. And he brings out, or she brings out, yeah, and do you remember two years ago? <laughs> do you remember last week? Oh, this happened, what's that going to do with the bro what we're talking about? Now? Because it's, it's, it stayed in. The idea is, is to get trained so that you can communicate with your spouse, communicate even with yourself. And it's very difficult to communicate with yourself, because sometimes we're too hard on ourselves. Indeed. I too think hard Sheikh on ourselves. It's time for our brothers to communicate yes, and with this, us. This is the question I've asked them earlier. That time is running Think out. of a time when you were really, really angry, you did something, and that you regret, and that it keeps flowing in your mind now and again. Mm. Who wants Asha? to start? Can you think of a time, Asha? That's very difficult for me, because um, I think there's basically two types of people. There are people who release their anger on a gradual basis, and there's people who hold in their anger, and then release it all in one go. Myself, mm. uh, we were talking about this in the break, uh, I tend to release my anger uh, gradually. I mean, everybody lives uh, a hard life, and we have a lot of stress in our life. This is uh, why at sometimes small issues, I will release my anger. And it's not about that particular issue, it's just me releasing some tension. Once I release that tension, I'm okay. Uh, I'm back to zero in terms of uh, my stress and my, uh, my anger. Um, this is why sometimes I don't get angry about the big things. Because I haven't built up enough anger to release it on the big issues. On some of those big, because you've but already released it slowly for the small issues. I've released it slowly, but on the small issues, mm. I will release my anger. And I do regret that sometimes, because, especially with family, is that they can't understand why I'm getting upset about a small issue. One thing I want to say, though, is... Uh, uh, Beautifully Japan said. And, and the uh, Beautifully said. Yeah. is that you have a choice. You always have a choice to react or respond. Yeah, but she may be... No, she didn't do anything. She didn't do anything. Yeah, but he, no, he didn't do anything. Why are you getting angry? Yeah, but no, think, why are you getting angry? You don't have to get angry, you have a choice in the matter. Abdullah. Well, like you just described, I think I'm the kind of person I, I hold my anger in, uh, and it kind of just comes out at one time. <laughs> <laughs> that one go could be yeah, dangerous. Yeah, the yeah. the yeah. dormancy it's, just it's explodes. Like a, so. A volcanic yeah. explosion. <laughs> And at that point, I do, I have made a lot of mistakes like this. You know, I, I once, uh, there was a friend of mine, he, all he did was just said, he put me in the chest really hard, and I, it wasn't the right time. I said, get up. And he was an employee of mine. I said, just get up. But he was a really good person, which is, uh, I'm sorry to say this on TV, by the way. <laughs> but he was a really good brother. Uh, but we broke I'm up sure from this. I'm sure he understand. Yeah, we broke up from this. And that was due to the stress of the work environment and... It was just a bad timing for the situation to have took place, and uh, okay. I still regret that, actually. Subhanallah. Yeah, I once got into a debate with my close, one of my very close friends about our values and our goals in the future. And for, uh, in a minute, we began to yield at each other, and it turned to a quarrel. So shaitan was... Uh, yeah, very hard. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, when I went home, I think I thought about it. Oh my God! I need. I if, if the time goes back, I'll give him time to speak. Well, I'll, uh, the, yeah. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gives you three days. The, the dean gives you three days yeah, to wallow in it and think about it and regret it. I think something between us was broken in this minute. Please. Until now. Subhanallah. I don't know Subhanallah. what Inshallah to make do. it easy, but try, inshallah. Sharif. In my view, anger has nothing to do with putting solutions for, for hard situations. Okay? From the very beginning, I have to think about it first, and I have to treat that situation easily. Uh, a very important situation ha ha that had happened to me, and I always remember it, and I always uh, regret for it. I had a girl uh, in my class, she, she was only 10 years old, okay? I always and you were the same age, obviously. No, no, I, I was her teacher. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. okay. Right. Uh, she was a student in my class. Okay. I, I always, I oftentimes told her to get, to get a certain book with her, to teach her from that book. But for several times, she didn't get the book. And I put her in, in, in a very impassive situation. I, I shouted at her. But later... Uh, I discovered that she was a needy girl and she could not get the book, the book. Yeah, because, <laughs> because and the fault was her father's because he couldn't get the book. And I, I, I said to her, I'm sorry, I didn't know that. And I also uh, offered, her, or offered her money to get the book uh, because I offered So you rectified a, a bad situation that was something yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> on a final note, I think that we have to uh, discuss yes. is the point that we have to be in a position where we recognize that the si does the situation require or necessitate this much anger? So some situations do this much attention. necessitate some anger. Yeah, and some it's control. You want to control. And when you don't get what you want, you stamp your feet. It's just like a, it's like a child. And if the nafs... Mm. The ego is not nurtured from a young age, trained to how to deal with anger and how to um, uh, control it, then mm -hmm. the reaction of an adult will be no different than a reaction of a, of a, of a child. Indeed, we'll have to leave it at that, Sheikh uh, Ramiz uh, Ibrahim. Um, uh, dear viewers, we only have a few seconds here left. We want to remind you uh, of uh, our daily uh, Islamic trivia question. Now, t tonight's question is, uh, uh, what is the surah uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised parents to teach their daughters in? And the choices are one, Surah An-Nisa, two, Surah An-Nur, three, Surah Al-Ahzab. Uh, you uh, can answer by sending us an MSS at 002-014-327-1771. You write your name, your country, and the number of the uh, correct uh, uh, answer. Again, what is the surah? The Prophet ﷺ advised parents to teach their daughters in. Is it an, an one, an isa, two, an nur, or three? Al-Ahzab, unfortunately, our time is up. On behalf of you, uh, we thank very much Sheikh Ramiz Ibrahim, our self-development trainer, life coach, uh, for uh, being guiding us here and hope to see you again tomorrow, Sheikh, and throughout uh, the entirety of uh, this program. And uh, we also thank on behalf of you, our dear brothers here in the studio, brothers Abdullah Adyami, Amr Abdelal, uh, Asher Saeed, and Sharif Hamdi. Thank you, brothers. Waiting to see you tomorrow and waiting to see you, dear viewers, tomorrow, inshallah, same time. Until then, this is Muhammad Abdul Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Glory be to Allah who sent Ramadan as a mercy to mankind. It's a purification of our soul, our heart, and our mind. Bear with patience for the sake of our Rahman. A continuous training to strengthen our Iman With the most sincere devotion and love we fast To be cleansed and free from sins of the past